problems with the same kind of thinking that caused them. These words will change your reality because poverty can't survive in a dough chaser's mentality. The Beat Majors. So to all my dough chasers, it's time to get this party started now. now. I like it. With your host, Jason White. Jason White. Jason White. Jason White. We are a financial improvement company that specializes at helping people improve their finances and boosting their credit scores. Today we are going to be talking about your credit score and getting a mortgage. I know a lot of you have um, goals for yourself of buying a, a new house, right? And you want to get approved for your dream home. And I have some information um, that doesn't make it impossible, but it does make it a little harder for you to make that a reality if that is a goal for you um, and you want to achieve that this year. So as you come in, let me know who you are and where you're from. Please do me a favor. Let me know if you can hear me. Please press one. Um, I have a, a new mic and I want to make sure that you can hear me clearly. Um, as you come in, please let me know who you are and where you're from. I know it's been a while, um, but for all of you who are here, I want to thank you for joining me today. Again, we are going to be talking about um, your credit score and mortgages. Um, basically, um, a lot of things are going on uh, in the uh, industry, um, and I want to give you an update about how it may be a little harder for you to get approved for a mortgage if you have a low credit score, okay? That, um um, this uh, pandemic that we're all going through, uh, but we are going to get through it, okay? Um, so, uh, last week, um, the $2 trillion stimulus uh, package was passed by the U.S. Senate, um, and it will allow homeowners um, who are hurt by the, this crisis to basically postpone their mortgage payments up to 12 months, okay? Um, and the thing about that is, that's going to have a lasting impact on the industry, and I want to share with you why. Um, but before we get into that, please let me know who you are and where you're from, and please press 1 if you can hear me. Tico, how you doing, man? Thank you for uh, pressing 1. Tico from Indiana. Uh, we got Melly Mel from Cali. How is everybody doing? Um, so I've been getting a lot of phone calls and a lot of uh, uh, messages, text messages, uh, concerning um, the, the housing industry and people are wondering, um, you know, how is this going to impact uh, our clients, right? Um, and the thing about it is a lot of you who are working on your credit, you're already doing what you need to do to prepare, to prepare yourself. Um, and those of you who are not working on your credit, this will probably give you a little fire under your butt um, to motivate you. Uh, because you don't want to miss out on the opportunities that are going to present themselves when all of this is over, right? And if your goal uh, to, of buying a house is on the line, you want to make sure that you are prepared to make that a reality. Anyway, the $2 trillion package, um, stimulus package, was approved by the U.S. Senate, um, and uh, it's causing the housing industry to, to get a little uh, shaky, okay? And what I mean by that is, there are uh, the homeowner, um, there's the servicing company, and then there's the bank, okay? The homeowner has the ability to postpone their payments, let's say, 12 months. That means that the bank won't receive their, 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 their mortgage payment for 12 months. However, the relationship between the servicing company and the bank is different, okay? Okay. And a lot of things that are going on is going to impact that relationship and which is going to ultimately impact the economy, which will ultimately impact us. OK, and here's the problem. Um, yes, you know, the, the stimulus package is helpful for a lot of people. I understand that um, I'm actually for it. OK, the thing is, by you postponing your mortgage or by someone postponing their mortgage up to 12 months, that's going to hurt the servicing company, okay? And the servicing company is basically the middleman between the bank uh, who makes your payments for you to the bank so that you don't have to worry, worry about it. They basically service you, the, the client, okay? The thing is, yeah, the banks won't 
they don't care if you don't make your payment because at the end of the day, their relationship is with them and the servicing company. The servicing company has an agreement that no matter what, they're going to make that payment to the bank. Okay. So if the servicing, if if the servicing company that's servicing you is not receiving your payment, they still have to make that payment to the bank because that's their agreement. <coughs> right. And the thing is, this is going to, uh, uh, cause a problem because a lot of servicing companies are over leveraged and Jason what do you mean by over leveraged I mean that a lot of these servicing companies have clients who got approved for the minimum credit score remember your credit score is a reflection of your payment history right Um, and the lower your credit score um, the more volatile your your payment history the more the the more often uh, you are to be late on your bills to have a high credit card usage um, the, the more likely you are not to keep your word, basically, okay? It's not, it's not, a, it's not true all the way, but that's how they use that credit score. It's a reflection of your payment history. So a lot of these servicing companies have clients who got approved for the FHA loan, the Federal Housing Authority uh, loan. Uh, the minimum is a 580 credit score, okay? And a lot of these people, you know, they were having a hard time getting approved, but these companies over leverage themselves by making it easy for a lot of these people to get approved. And some of these people actually don't have the financial behaviors, the financial habits to maintain their payments. Okay. Um, and it said in this article, um, that they're expecting one in four Americans to ultimately request payment deferrals. That means a lot of these servicing companies who have clients, who had a low credit score, that means that a lot of their clients aren't going to pay. That means that your servicing company um, is going to be in trouble because they still have to make that payment. And if they're not being a good steward of their finances, of their money, and they don't have a reserve, then they're going to have to use their own money to make your mortgage payment. And what happens if you don't get your job back? What happens when the person is out of work and they can't pay their mortgage? That means that the house, the, the house that they have, the mortgage that they have goes in default and the servicing company, they just lose that money. Okay. So they're scared because they know that a lot of people are going to, um, you know, request a, a deferment on their payment, which is understandable. However, the servicing company is basically left to, um, to basically handle that themselves with the bank. Um, and their concern is they need, um, help, right? They need uh, the, the the Fed to come in um, and, and save the day. Not 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 necessarily that they need a bailout, but they need um, some temporary help uh, to make sure that you know there's not another housing crisis, right? Um, and uh, I I quote um, one uh, one of the uh, interviewees. He mentioned that we're looking for assistance. This is not a bailout. This money is not coming into our company for payroll. It's making the borrowers payment, right? And um, the good news is the Fed is actually willing to provide credit to the economy. To the economy, they're willing to provide credit to these companies to help them out. So that's the good news. Okay, I'm not sharing this information to to scare you. I'm sharing this information so that you are knowledgeable about what's going on in the industry okay so um so far if you're if if this information is helpful please you know give me some feedback um uh, let me know who you are where you're from please like this video um subscribe to the channel i would definitely appreciate it but how does that impact you as a potential borrower in the future okay um the thing is because a lot of these servicing companies have over leveraged themselves by allowing people to borrow who probably shouldn't have borrowed in the first place, what they're going to do is they are raising the minimum credit score requirement for you to get approved for a mortgage. Now, the the the, uh, the, the FHA loan is still the same. Nothing has changed. The requirement of that loan, the still minimum, is 580. However, the banks are the ones who are actually controlling um the guidelines to get to get their loans right so 
Um, in reality, the banks are trying to look out for the servicing companies by raising the requirement to make sure that there's not another housing uh, crisis because these companies need to stay around. It helps the economy, keeps the economy moving forward, right? Um, so what they're doing is the, the credit score minimum is no longer going to be 580. If you are someone who's been banking on getting a 580 credit score to get your house, unfortunately, um, that's not a good strategy anymore during this uh, situation that we're going with with the, the coronavirus and the economy. They're raising that credit score minimal requirement. Um, I've been getting uh, text messages and, and phone calls. Some companies are raising theirs to 640 credit score. Some are even raising their, their minimum uh, credit score requirement as high as 680, okay? So what does that mean for you? That means that if you are someone who has a bad credit score or is not the best credit score, that means that you need to continue to work on improving your credit score. You should be maximizing this time to work on your credit, okay? Because it's not gonna be as easy as it was um, to, 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 to get approved for these mortgages. They're raising um, the guidelines, they're raising the bar, they're making it more strict because they don't wanna over, over, over leverage themselves. I'm stuttering. They don't wanna over leverage themselves. They want to be around when the economy picks back up. And in order for them to do that, they need to be able to provide loans to people who they feel will pay it back, okay? So that means that your payment history needs to improve, okay? That means your credit card balances need to be lowered, okay? That means those collections, those charge-offs that you have on your credit report, you need to find a way to get those removed so that when it comes time for you to get your house, you're not depending on that low minimum requirement. You wanna make sure that you get approved because you've been working real hard on your credit score. Okay, you want to aim for a 660, 680 credit score. Okay, um, now of course, you know, I do own a credit repair company, so I'm not trying to put fear in your head. Please don't, 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 don't get that understanding. I'm just trying to share information with you that's going to, you know, put that fire under your butt to motivate you to really take advantage of this downtime so that when this is all over, you can hit the ground running and uh, take advantage of these opportunities that are gonna present themselves, okay? Now, don't get me wrong, we, we do want your business, um, but more importantly, I want you to have this information because I get a pleasure out of you being successful. I kinda get, you know, I kinda get some recognition when, when you're successful. That helps my ego, okay? I'm just being 100% honest, I love it, okay? Um, so let me see who we got here. We got Sammy Sosa, how you doing? Antonio Edmond from uh, Florida. How y'all doing down there? Uh, hopefully everybody's doing well. Hopefully your family is healthy. At the end of the day, that's the only thing that truly matters is your health and your family's health. So hopefully everything is going well. Um, I've, I've been hearing some real crazy stories um, and it's just, it just it hurts my soul sometimes. And when I run across these people, I just wanna give them all the money in my wallet. Like here, take this, please take care of your family. Uh, we got Quentin, Cliff Peters, uh, we got Marsha from North Carolina, Miss Marmar, how you doing? Um, so yeah, this is going to be live on Facebook and YouTube, uh, so as you come in, let me know who you are and where you're from, uh, but please give me some love, uh, like this video. Um, so let's talk about uh, what you can do to uh, you know fix your situation, okay? Um, let me see here. I want to make sure that I cover everything. I want you to understand before we go any further, FHA, um, the law hasn't changed. That's still there. However, banks are banks are in control of their guidelines, right? So they're raising the bar of themselves, not FHA, okay? So don't, don't get that confused. Um, I also need you to understand that a lot of these banks are raising the credit score minimum um, from a 640 to a 680, okay? Um, that's the range in which they're they're uh, making these requirements. So as you're looking for financing, please reach out to your mortgage banker, your mortgage broker, um, and figure out what the credit score minimum is because you don't want to waste those inquiries on your credit report applying for a mortgage with a 600 credit score. It's not it's not going to work out for you right now, okay? Because the economy is real shaky, um, and they're doing this to lower their risk, okay? Um, people are out of work. That means that a lot of people are going to default on their loans and they don't want to be left with that, that liability. Okay. 
Um, so they're doing this to protect themselves, which is understandable. However, you as the consumer, you need to have this information so you can protect yourself and make uh, sure that you are able to maximize um, the economy when this whole corona situation is over. Um, and let's talk about what you can do to fix your credit, okay? So we understand there's five components to a credit score. Uh, we got payment history, which is 35% of your credit score. Credit utilization, which is 30% of your credit score. Together, these two make up 65% of your credit score. The biggest aspects of your credit are payment history and credit utilization, okay? So you want to find ways to add more payment history to your credit report, and you want to find ways to lower your credit utilization percentage, okay? Request a credit limit increase, all right? Um, if, if you're able to, look into seeing if the, 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 the creditor that you're with, let's say you're with Capital One, call them and see if you qualify for a new line of credit, okay? See if they can open up an additional line of credit, which is going to raise your limits, which is going to lower your credit utilization as well. Hint, hint. Um, the third component is length of history. This is 15% of your credit score. I do not recommend that you close any of your accounts right now. Keep those open as long as possible. Fourth component, we have the credit file mix. Um, the different kind of accounts that you can have on your credit report, you can have um, an installment account, uh, a revolving account, and open accounts. You don't really see open accounts too, too often. So focus on having a good number of revolving accounts compared to installment accounts. Three to one. Three revolving accounts to one installment account is good. You can have as many installment accounts as you want, but that's the minimum, okay? Um, that's 10% of your credit score. And then lastly, we have inquiries. This is how often are you applying for new line of credits. You want to keep that as low as possible because that's 10% of your credit score, uh, which equates to about 55 points. A lot of people can be up 50 points if they just understand no and stop applying, okay? So when you are applying for a credit on, on your account, be strategic. Do your research first. Contact the creditor. See who they're going to pull your credit score from. And make sure you have good credit with that company because it'll be a total waste of time if they're pulling with Experian and your and your Experian credit score is a 570. You're not going to get approved, okay? Do your research first and apply for accounts that you know you're going to get approved for, okay? That you have a high rate of getting approved, okay? Um, if you are someone who needs help, we can help you, okay? I own a credit repair company called the 700 Club Credit Repair. Um, we're going to put that information in the common area. You can learn more about our credit repair service at the 700 club credit repair.com. We are still working. Okay. I'm here in the office. I got my team, uh, working, uh, from home. We have protocols and, uh, systems in place that are allowing us to still thrive during this tough time. We're helping a lot of people fix their credit and I want to continue to help more people. So if you are someone who needs help, uh, with fixing your credit, removing some of those negatives off your credit report, and getting information on how to build your credit. We have information. We have the knowledge. We have the expertise. Uh, definitely check us out, uh, the 700clubcreditrepair.com. Um, that website uh, is in the common area. Repair.com. Check us out. Um, that is also going to be in the description of this video. Uh, for you to learn more about that. Um, Robbie, I'm doing well, man. Um, actually, you know, you'll be surprised. A lot of people are understanding how important credit is. It's crazy because right before they announced the coronavirus, I took out a business loan that I was going to use for marketing. And I have like, you know, an extra $20,000 that I just have sitting there just in case something were to pop off. I can continue to pay my, my, my employees and we can continue to be in business. And that's the power of credit. You have the ability to leverage other people's money, make good decisions with, and use it to, uh, to thrive in a downtime, right? Um, so, you know, God has been good to me. Um, I, I appreciate, you know, everybody who's given us the opportunity to still help them. Uh, you will be surprised. March was actually our best month of the year. People are understanding the importance of credit and they're allowing us to continue to still help them. Um, so, you know, Robbie, I appreciate you asking that. Family's healthy. Um, as you can see, I can hold my breath. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Everything's good. Everything's good. Um, yeah, please reach out to us. 
Uh, we do close at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so if you don't uh, reach us uh, at a convenient time, please leave a voicemail, and my support team will reach out to you by the next business day to schedule that consultation. Okay, Ms. Marmar? Um, Gerald asked, error on my credit report, do the bureaus have to delete it or correct it? Um, that depends on how you addressed it. You can ask them to uh, repair it, to, to make it, to improve it, or if it's a, a derogatory account, you can ask them to delete it. Um, either way, it should help your credit. But what they do is based off of what you demand them to do, okay? G Friday, how you doing? Uh, Devin Almin from Detroit, thank you for uh, joining us. We got JB71 from Central Florida. Uh, Ms. Marmar said, do you agree this is the best time to dispute items with the bureaus being understaffed? That's a misconception. Um, you have to understand that uh, the credit bureaus have a system called eOscar. Okay, look that up. E S C O R Oscar. I think that's how you spell Oscar. However, you spell Oscar. I forgot how you spell Oscar. Anyway, eOscar. Okay, um, they have it's an automated system where when your disputes go in, they just put that into the computer. The computer processes all the disputes, and then they have information that pops up where they can just click a button and say that the account has been verified. So though the credit bureaus are understaffed, quote unquote, um, they have they have systems in place that allow them to still thrive during this time. So um, this is just as good as an opportunity to fix your credit um, as if it was Christmas. They're not, there's no such thing as the credit bureau being understaffed where they're not able to handle your disputes because they have automated systems in place that will handle any situation, unfortunately, okay? Um, some people, uh, you know, they'll tell you otherwise, but that's because they may not truly understand how in-depth these credit bureaus are. E. Oscar, thank you so much. I appreciate that. E-O-S-C-A-R, E. Oscar. I feel like Floyd Mayweather. No shade, Floyd, if you're watching this, man. <laughs> Uh, let me see. We got uh, Ticey. How you doing? Uh, what's up, Robert? How you doing? How's everything going on in Florida? Uh, I got a little brother out there. Hopefully everything is going well. Um, I know that you guys were shut down for a little bit. Um, you're welcome. Okay. So, I, yeah, I just wanted to go live and share that information with you. I don't want to take up too much of your time. I just wanted to give you an update of what's going on in the industry. Uh, please do your research. Get an understanding yourself. Um, the actual article that I'm reading um, that led me to this is uh, the $2 trillion stimulus will slam the mortgage industry unless the Fed comes to rescue. To the rescue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to include that uh, article in the comment area so that you can read that. Um, and if you're interested in getting help uh, fixing your credit, please check us out. Oh, I almost forgot. Check me out, y'all. So I don't know if you all been paying attention to what we've been doing over here, but I'm really focusing on helping everyone get their finances in order. I created what is the what is called the Black Lettuce Budget Planner. Okay, and this budget planner, um, I'm basically you know sharing uh, templates that we use for our coaching clients um, to help them get an understanding of how to fix the uh, the their, their finances. Right, a lot of people during the Corona situation when it first hit. And it was time to go to the grocery store uh, to buy some groceries. They didn't have any money set aside. They didn't have anything set aside and available for them uh, so that they can depend on themselves to go take advantage of those opportunities. They were unprepared. And a lot of you, um, you know, you may be, it's, it's, the statistics say that almost 80% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. Okay. So out of, all of you who are watching right now, there's probably 24 of you who are, uh, you know, you don't have a, an emergency fund, right? So what I've done is I've created this budget planner to help people who are struggling with their finances to, you know, get a hold of their finances, to take control and you know, begin to eliminate debt, build their emergency fund and learn how to budget their money. It's a tool, but it's a, it's a pretty cool uh, budget planner, probably going to be the sweetest one that you'll ever find, ever, okay? Um, and if you're interested in getting your hands on this, we're selling these uh, at blacklettuce.com. Feel free to check that out. 
you know, I'm just trying to provide tools. I also uploaded some videos as well, so you can check that out. Um, it's actually 25% off HTTPS. So it costs me about $18 to make one of these and I'm selling them for 29 bucks. So my profit on one of these would be $11, okay? Um, I was originally gonna sell them for about 40 bucks, but I decided to, uh, you know, not rip you a new one. Um, but yeah, you can check that out at blacklettuce.com. Um, they're on sale, 25% off, check that out. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to provide this information with you. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel, um, and do me a favor. Share this with your friends and family so they can get this information as well. Um, I'm going to try to go live uh, either tomorrow or beginning of next week with some more information for you so you guys can stay up to date. Uh, watch the videos that I have on the YouTube channel uh, so that you can get the information that we've been talking about lately when it comes to budgeting and eliminating debt. Um, and at the end of the day, uh, you know, at, at the end of the day, we want to help you learn how to use your finances to transcend financially so that you can ultimately have the mindset of a dough chaser, which is to um, seek a financial advantage and be able to use that money so that you can give back to your community and, you know, create the environment that you want for yourself. OK, so I want to thank you all. Um, Taryn, he said he wants a consultation. Please give my office a call, 567-318-5210. Again, 567-318-5210. My support team will get you on our schedule, and we can give you that consultation, okay? Thank you all for your time. I'll see you next time. Again, my name is Jason White. I'm out. Peace.